Hi, this is Jaya. In this video, we shall see the summary of Meghadudam Cloud Messenger by Kalidasa. This Meghadudam comes in two parts and in part one, he writes about the Yaksha and the cloud. Yakshas are actually de demigods uh, and they have all the divine powers. Uh, and what all powers they have is they can change their form in whatever way they want. They can fly in the sky. They can uh, become invisible. And not only that, they have so many other supernatural powers also. But this Yaksha in Meghatudam has temporarily lost all these powers. And not only that, Gubera, the king of Alagapuri, has banished him from coming into Alagapuri for a year. This Alagapuri was actually a Himalayan kingdom and Gubera was its ruler. And Gubera had taken away all this uh, Yaksha's divine power. So this Yaksha is wandering southward from the Himalayas and now he has reached Ramagiri which is a mountain in central India. And there he keeps thinking about his young wife whom he had left behind in Alagapuri. They had married only a few months back and uh, Yaksha feels that it is very cruel on part of uh, the king to separate them uh, soon after their wedding. So he goes and stands on top of uh, Ramagiri and he looks at the sky and the sky is so heavy and moist and laden and they are slowly moving towards north and uh, he thinks that they are going to go to his home in Alaka and uh, as uh, they were moving in the northward direction he wished that he could also join them and fly back home which he cannot do now now in his place people will always enjoy the first rain in the season they'll make it as a festival and uh, he knows very well that he's going to miss all that fun and gaiety and at the same time he's very sure that his wife also will not be able to enjoy this season because he is not there with her and thinking about that, he is filled with grief and he is now thinking that he should not have neglected his duties and displeased his master, Gubera. And at that very instant, he sees a huge dark cloud coming and resting on the mountain peak. It was looking like an elephant kneeling down on a river bank. At the very sight of this majestic cloud, the Eksha has one hope. He thinks, why not I send a message to my wife? through this northward uh, going cloud and so he approaches the cloud with an offering of flowers and he says like this O mighty cloud capable of carrying immense quantities of water O noble relative of Pushkara Kishmarpa Magonapa Prakti Purusham please take a message from me to my wife she lives in my house in Alaka the kingdom of the lord of wealth Kubera Alaka, my beloved country, is perpetually a glow lit up by the luminescent crescent moon on Shiva's head. Lord Shiva lives in Kailasa, adjacent to Alaka. But as he is a good friend of my master, he spends much of his time in our gardens. Our gardens are beautiful. The trees bear fruit all the year around. The roses and other flowers fill the place with fragrance. They are ponds and three tree shaded walks and a medley of bird sounds and the cries of the peacocks are nectar to the ear. The woods are the home of sages who spend all their time meditating on God. I beg you to depart immediately though I can see you and the mountain are dear friends. In fact on seeing you after the year long separation the mountain shed hot tears. But the flamingos are waiting to fly with you all the way to Mount Kailas and, Ma and Lake Vanasa. They have already filled their beaks with gentle lotus stalks to see them through the long journey. So do leave at once and take a message from me to my wife. O oh, colossal cloud, the wives of the superhuman Siddhas who inhabit the region between the earth and the sun will see you and wonder if you are in fact a mountain being carried off by the wind. Soar into the sky with your face turned northwards, dear Meghatuda. I am sure you will find the route to Alaka most agreeable. En route, there are many mountains for you to rest on whenever you feel fatigued. There are also many rivers and streams for you to drink from whenever you are exhausted. The Yaksha then proceeds to give detailed directions to the cloud messenger on how to reach Alaka from Ramagiri and in his mind's eye he sees the journey taking shape. 
Now in part 2, it is about the cloud messenger's journey. He says, Begin your journey, O Meghatuda, by sprinkling rain on the parched earth. The fragrance of wet earth will spread happiness among the countrymen and women. They will take to their fields singing joyously and run their ploughs through the supple soil. Soon you will see the Amrutta mountain beautifully decked in a skirt of orange and green. Its slopes will be covered with thick groves of Amra, heavy with ripe fruits. As you race towards the Amrakta, eager to rest after a fatiguing journey, you may see a wildfire ravaging the forest, quickly dose the flames with rain. A grateful Amrakta will embrace you and happily invite you to recline on its lofty heights. When even ordinary folks wish to reciprocate a good turn, want one so noble as the good mountain? Refreshed, resume your journey northwards. You will be able to fly with the wind as you would have emptied all the water in fighting the wildfires scorching the slopes of Amrakutta. When you grow tired of being light and airy, drink generously of the Riva, that is River Narmada, till you become full and heavy. Majestically sail over mountains and plains, showering rain and bringing joy to all living things. The green and brown Kadamba buds will spread out their petals as soon as the rain water touches them. The bees will make a beeline for kadamba trees attracted by the fragrance of the fresh blossoms. The deer will gather in groups on the marshy river banks eager to feast on the fresh kandali leaves. The elephant herds that love the smell of wet earth, especially aromatic after a dry spell, will be greatly excited at your arrival. The akshata birds will fly animatedly hither and thither, skillfully catching every drop of rain. After all, they feed only on fresh drops of rain falling from the sky, don't they? You will make even the sittas happy. They are sages who are supposed to have overcome mundane feelings like love and joy. But when you thunder, the wives will run to hug them in fear, overwhelming them. In due course, you will reach Vidisha, drink deep of the sweet waters of the river Vetravadi De, and settle down to rest on one of the small nameless hills. Surely the anonymous hill will be thrilled to be playing host to a majestic cloud such as you. The flowers in the dense forest of Kadamba trees that cover its slopes will perk up the moment raindrops touch them, making it seem as if the mountain is exhilarated at having such an exalted guest as you. After a siesta on the small hill, proceed to Ujjain, the capital of the kingdom of Avanti. You will have to go a bit out of the way, but do visit Ujjaini. You are bound to be charmed by this delightful city. If you aren't, I can only say that your eyes have failed you. When you reach Ujjaini, the early morning air will be charged with the fragrance of blooming lotuses and there will be a cool breeze from the river Sipara on the banks of which stands the city. The aristocratic mansions of Ujjaini rival the homes of the gods in the celestial city Amaravati. In fact, this is the season Ujjaini is also called Vishala. Sail over the market. You will find it carpeted with pearl necklaces and precious stones, coral aplenty and bright emeralds like young grass. Seeing all the wealth of the ocean there, you may even begin to wonder what the seas will have left except the salty water. The women will dry their hair with frankincense after their birth, bath and the smoke given off by the incense will add to your size and color. You will appear so imposing and dark that even Shiva's attendants will look at you in worshipful admiration. Your mass and blue-grey complexion will remind them of their master whose neck had turned blue when he had consumed a deadly poison called Kalakutta. In the evening, the rhythmic clanging of bells, drum beats and the sound of a couch will blow, being blown will draw you towards the temple of Mahakala dedicated to one of Shiva's many avatars. Engrossed in the festivities, which will include a vibrant dance showing Shiva as the killer of the demon Gajasura, I won't be surprised if you lose count of time. Ultimately, you may decide to stay overnight in Ujjaini. If you do, dredge the city that night with a gentle rain accompanied by mellow thunder that does not frighten the people. Let bright flashes of lightning light the dark night like streaks of gold on a touchstone. O Megatuda. Though it will delay my message to my beloved, I encourage you to spend an entire day in Ujjaini absorbing the wondrous smells, sounds and sights 
along with moisture from rivers like the Nirvindya. But next morning, be sure to leave even before the sun arises to dry the dew drops on the lotus petals. Advance swiftly to Devagiri, the home of Skanda, the war lord, and the young son of Lord Shiva. Shiva Skanda with freshly drawn water from the holy river Ganga. May the water droplets fall as gently on the Lord as if it were a shower of flowers that you are raining down. As you thunder in joy, the sounds will echo and re-echo through the mountains and Lord Skanda's vehicle, the peacock, will dance in acceleration. When you reach river Charmanvati and bend low to drink of its waters, what a beautiful picture you will make. To the celestial beings flying far above you and the river will seem like a sapphire suspended from a string of pearls. They'll stop to enter the spectacle and go away exclaiming, What a beautiful cloud! It seems as if he has stolen the complexion of the wielder of the Sranga. Moving briskly, sail over Dasapura and Kurushetra. As your shadow darkens Kurushetra, pay obeisance to the great battlefield. It was in Kurushetra a long time ago that the epic Mahabharata war took place. It was there that the great archer Arjuna rained arrows that made his enemies writhe like the lotuses that tremble under a heavy showers. After bowing down to the memory of the heroes of yore, continue to move at a fast pace. Drink of the waters of the holy rivers Saraswati and Ganga before coming to rest on the Himalaya. Enjoy your rest on the mountain of snow made fragrant by the musk of the Tibetan musk deer. Suddenly, they could be a conflagration. Frequently in these thick forests of sarala, pine and bamboo, the branches rub against each other and the friction gives rise to a flame when the wind blows. The foliage is dry and a raging fire could ravage vast swaths of the forest in no time at all. The yaks wave their thick tails and the air produced further adds the spread of the fire. Quickly shower down your waters in thousands of jets and extinguish the fire. Hearing you thunder, the Sharaba may think it is their sworn enemy, the lion roaring. They will turn out in great numbers and attack you. Those who are truly great regard the pettiness of smaller people with contempt and remain unaffected by it. Let the impeticity of the Sharaba therefore be merely a source of amusement for you. Then climb higher towards Kailasa, the abode of Lord Shiva. As your dark blackness encircles the ivory white snow-covered mountain, you will look like a black cloth thrown over the massive shoulder of Balarama, the fair-skinned stepbrother of the dark-skinned Lord Krishna. Your thunder, the pleasant sounds made by the bamboos filled with wind and the songs of the Kinaras will combine to make a mellifluous musical melody, a concert fit to entertain Pushpasapati. You will soon reach Manasa, drink of the waters of the beautiful lake and have fun spraying the water on the hordes of Krancha birds, the golden lotuses in the lake, on Airavada, Lord Indra's elephant, and on the fresh blooms of the wish-granting trees. Refreshed after the sport, move swiftly northwards. You will reach a city whose lofty, multi-storied mansions appears to be holding up masses of rain clouds. The dark clouds hanging over the city of white mansions will appear like a women's dark braid interwoven with string of pearls. You cannot miss the city, my beloved home, Alaka. Indeed, I see so much similarity between you and the city. The vivacious women of Alaka brighten up the city like your flashes of lightning brighten up the sky. The pictures that adorn the mansions of Alaka add color to the somber walls like the many-hued rainbow adds color to you. The concert drums sound like your thunder, the floors paved with sapphire are as dark as your complexion and the towering mansion of the city rise up high into the sky just like you. Once you reach Alaka, tarry not, fly directly to my bungalow and deliver my message to my wife forthwith. But I can't blame you if you find Alaka breathtaking and cannot spurn its attractions. The city is full of yakshas and kinaras. We demigods never grow old and like young people every way, we are a lively lot. They are bound to be a lot of singing, dancing, romancing. The joe, the river, is infectious and you cannot but stop to savour the enjoyment of life. You will find the young women alluring though they muse mere flowers to add to their beauty, 
faces bleached with lodra flowers, sporting lotuses in their hands, and fresh kunda and kurabaka blooms blossoms in their braids. Ears decorated with the delicate shirisha blooms and nipa flowers strung together to mark the parting in their hair. The moon from Shiva's head lights all the alaka with a gentle radiance. The stars add to the sparkle, the reflection on the crystal flowered mansions lighting up the interiors. A gentle breeze from the Mandangani river and the shade of Mandara trees on its banks keep alaka perpetually cool. In Gubera's palace, you will find horses as dark as the dark leaves on the towering trees, elephants as majestic as mountains and warriors who wear the wounds from the battle with the mighty Ravana as their ornament. Taking your fill of Alaka's beauty, slowly move over the city looking for my dwelling. You won't need any directions to find my house. Its gloomy appearance in the midst of all the splendor will mark it out. Light up my house with a flash of lightning. But let it be a mild flash, no more brilliant than the glitter of a row of fireflies. A brighter flash would intrude on the private grief of my family. A single flash will be enough. You'll find a lady lying on the ground like a wilted land lotus. Her eyes too will resemble a lotus, but a half-open one on a cloudy day, swollen as they will be free from weeping continuously. Linger on and observe her a while. She'll fondle her pet Maina and say, Oh, sweet-natured little bird, Sarika, do you remember your master? You were his favorite pet. Do you too long for his company? Are you also anxious for his return? She'll bring out a veena and painstakingly tune, to the, tune the strings, but when she begins to sing, her voice will break as the song contains my name and she'll not be able to continue. Laying aside the veena, she'll take a basket of flowers and count out the flowers one for each day left for the return of my return, day of my return. Then, with nothing else to divert her mind, she'll lie down once again and try to sweep. See her pale lips, dry hair, unpaired nails and dull eyes and understand her anguish. Being a Kamarupa, you can assume any form. So adopt a suitable disguise and approach her with a message from me or her husband. Then become a splendorous cloud once again and resume your journey. Flying over new lands and unknown regions, wherever you feel inclined to go. With these words, Eksha entered his soliloquy. No sooner had he finished than a gentle breeze began to blow. The Chataka bird, which feeds only on raindrops that fall fresh from the clouds, began a happy song. Rows of cranes appeared in the sky as if to attend on the cloud, and Indra's magnificent multicolored bow added a sparkle to the gray, the dark gray cloud, like the colorful peacock feather that added color to the dark complexioned Lord Krishna. The cloud messenger, the Meghatuda, soared into the sky, and the Yaksha spirit soared with it. He saw the good omens all around and felt sure his message will be delivered. And here ends the poem. It's a beautiful poem by Kalidasa. He has uh, beautifully written even the directions from Central India to the Himalayas and we also will feel as though we are traveling along with him and enjoying the scenery all the way. If you have anything more to add on what I, to what I have said, please write it in the comment box. Like the video, share it with your friends and if you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Thank you.